Welcome back to Big Monday tonight from South Bend, Indiana, where the Notre Dame students have just returned from spring break. They stormed through the gates here at the Joyce Center. This game has been sold out for weeks. They want to get the best seats as the preseason pick as the Big East champion is in town. The Syracuse Orange ranked number seven here to take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at 10 and two winners of six in a row. It's the first big Monday of the year presented by Bud Light. We'll have Big East basketball for you every Monday night into the month of March. And welcome back to Big Monday, everybody. Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery and Jay Billis. Delighted to have you with us. We get a look tonight at two of the very best in the Big East and what looks like a great year for this conference. Well, Syracuse is the number seven team in the country. They have two All-Americans, Jerry McNamara, Hakeem Warwick. I think how their sophomores play is going to be very important. Guys like Terrence Roberts and Demetrius Nichols, Louis McCroskey. But also, they're going to have to defend the three-point shot because Notre Dame can really fire it up from behind the arc. It's nice to be back on the road with you. I'll get some rest again. Take good care of myself. <laughs> Rest indeed. The three point shots very important for Notre Dame. They're going to knock down shots. We know the Q's gets almost 80 points a game, 77, so they're going to have to shoot well and shoot often. Notre Dame, one of the best defensive teams in the country, and a major task tonight will be dealing with the second leading scorer in the Big East, Hakeem Warwick, behind only Ryan Gomes. Long and athletic, double figures in every ball game this year, seven double doubles. He dunks everything around the goal, and he is facing the basket. He wheels and spins. They like to get him into the middle of the floor. Very effective. And Chris Thomas, the guy that's going to have to run the show, he's playing great basketball right now. Sound, the combo guard can fill it up, put it on the floor, can find people, and he's also going to have to ring the bell deep with regularity. The all-time assist leader at Notre Dame, 10th in the nation this year, and their leading score at 15 and a half per game. Both teams are 2-0 and in the Big East so far. Notre Dame has never been 3-0 and in Big East Conference play. Akeem Warwick ready to jump center against Turin Francis. Reggie Greenwood will throw the ball in the air. He's working with Tim Higgins and John Clockerty as our officials, and Big Monday is underway. The tip controlled by the Cuse. Sean and Jay. The Irish go. Josh Pace into the lane, the dipsy do, and that's his trademark for the first bucket of the ball. So he didn't use the rim at all. He may lead the country in crawlers, banging around the rim of the glass. Jay, he can really get deep. He's like a six-five power forward. When he puts the ball and gets in the lane, he can make those little floaters. It's a three-guard lineup for Notre Dame. Since they went to this look, they've won all five games. They added Colin Falls to the starting lineup, along with Chris Thomas and Chris Quinn. Karen Francis and Dennis Lattimore, the other starters for the Irish. And I'll tell you, the 2 3 is going to make the big guys score. They're really stretching the D. Nice look. And with the shot clock running out, it is Lattimore along the baseline to tie the game at two. Good cut by Lattimore, and the penetration set it up. Well, that's one thing that Syracuse cannot allow. They cannot allow Notre Dame to penetrate into the middle. That's where Craig Forth has to step up in the middle of that zone. Louis McCroskey had it blocked by Lattimore. And Colin Falls, the sophomore, leads the Irish the other way. It's a Notre Dame team that has struggled to score from time to time this year, but they're coming off an excellent performance on Saturday, a hard-fought win here against Villanova. A game in which they scored 78 points. And hey, Sean, but they keep the opponent to 58. That's the key. Well, this smaller lineup is going to help their scoring. They'll get better spacing, stretch the defense more. Quinn for three. Well, you can't gamble and leave your feet. But that's what they need. Chris Quinn has been struggling from the field. The confidence of having that ball go through the net, immeasurable for him. Shooting 40% from the floor, 39 for the year from three. Lattimore deflects another McCroskey shot. And Falls ran down the ball in the corner. Quinn in transition for three. A little bit long, and the rebound got deflected to Josh Pace. Let Warwick touch it this trip, guys. Or McNamara. McNamara for three. He's averaging 15 per game. He's made 14 threes in their last three games. He's starting to find his usual mark from long distance. And that's really hard to defend, Sean, because it's an exchange in transition that is hard to guard. And they just dribble right at him, and he goes after it. Tied at five. The ball goes out of bounds to Notre Dame with 18 to shoot. We mentioned the five starters for Notre Dame for Syracuse, the familiar duo of McNamara and Warwick with McCroskey, a recent addition to the starting lineup, Josh Pace, and Craig Forth, who has started every game of his Syracuse career tonight, number 119 in a row. For the seven-footer, Thomas, a three that rattles out. 
into the arms of fourth. Now they do shoot, shoot deep. That's why they're always balanced, Jay. Look at this nice quick entry, though. Hakeem Moore. Oh, oh, oh. Bring your lunch. Oh, my. I have never seen that, though, from the box, a dunk like that. Have you? Well, as a defender, you try to push him out to that spot. He turns around and dunks right in your mug. Oh. Don't have dinner with him. Well, take it off your plate. Falls answers with a three to put the Irish up. He's averaged 15 points per game over the last seven. He's averaging 11 per game for the year. Notre Dame by one. How about that? The three. That's the dunk of the baby face guy. So, uh, the, the, the dunk is uh, a lot of show, but when you can ring the bell deep, you're rewarded. Can he dunk from here? He is can. The question. And he missed. And Thomas the rebound. Twice this year, Hakeem Warwick has had eight dunks in a game against Hofstra and Albany. Francis fouled on a reach in. Well, Jay, uh, you've played some great big guys. Has this ever happened to you from Ralph, the box? Ralph Sampson did it, but run away. Oh, my. That's brutal. I think you got to take a foul on this. you got to push him. That is extraordinary. Send it in. And, Billy, that, that counts for almost more than two it points and more than one dunk. I mean, that's going to resonate in this building for a while. That gives new meaning to athleticism, Sean. Mm -hmm. Something that's escaped all three of us, I might add. <laughs> Warwick, a senior from Philadelphia, came back for his senior year, had to develop a perimeter game. Francis missed the first free throw. Notre Dame came into this game having made 28 free throws in a row. They were 19 out of 19 against Villanova here on Saturday, and they made the last nine in their win at Seton Hall last Wednesday night. Now this uh, press make them use clock. Very subtle offensive maneuver. McNamara plays great off the ball using screens. McNamara might have been deflected by Quinn. The rebound down to Colin Falls. Well, Quinn got good pressure on that shot. You want to try to force him to curl that screen. I think they're going to have to give some bumps. Nice entry. If he can make this, they're in good shape. Francis, that is. Francis missed from about 16 feet and fourth the rebound. Four of the first five shots from Notre Dame tonight had been threes before that two point try by Francis. Josh Pace. The putback. That advantage of the long rebound, though, your guards really have to help you defensively. Ace is a senior from Griffin, Georgia. The X Factor, according to Jim Beheim, does so much to help the team with rebounding and steals in addition to ten and a half a game. He does everything in the game except shoot from the perimeter. Nice pump again, an open look for Quinn. Great pass, and Quinn missed a wide open three. Francis took it away from fourth. Francis a nice move. Great footwork and patience. You know what happened Bill? What Warwick took himself out of the play by going after that block shot. He was by half court. He couldn't get back down to rebound. McNamara catch and shoot and three. Now fourth people say what does he do? He screens great. He's the one that freed up Jerry McNamara and a little nylon from the little guy. Two threes for Jerry McNamara. 242 in his career. Now seven away from Syracuse's all time three point field goal maker Preston Shumpert. And Jim Beheim looks for a great senior year for McNamara because he had to relax this summer with all the injuries. He was banged up. Couldn't work on his game. Doesn't show it though. Thomas a miss. Warwick the rebound. And the Orange looking to run. And McNamara's pass deflected out of bounds by Lattimore. Entertaining start to Big Monday presented by Bud Light. The preseason pick to win the conference. Syracuse leads by one. Two out of four from three point land for McNamara. Right after our game here, the Joy Center, Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, rolls on from Oklahoma, where the Sooners host the Yukon Huskies. And then at midnight, it's a Mountain West showdown between UNLV and Utah. Great matchups in our first Big Monday of the year. Boy, Oklahoma, Kevin Bookout playing as well as any big man in the country right now, shooting close to 70% from the field. Speaking of great big man, that Utah team has a kid named Bogut. Andrew Bogut. 
who is an outstanding prospect. And UNLV is going to be a nice program. Uh, they're coming along. Had them early mm -hmm. in the year. Solid play. John Clark, he just come over and said, how about that dunk? You know, the refs, <laughs> the one we're applauding, the team's jammed. Uh, seen a few dunks in his officiating career. Foul called against Notre Dame. Lattimore whistled for his first. And the second against Notre Dame. Nearly six minutes in. A one point lead for the Cuse, coached by Jim Beheim in his 29th season. He's nine wins away from becoming the 17th coach all time to reach 700 in Division I play. And the next win will be number 300 in the Big East. He'll be the first to reach 300 Big East wins. Julie's little boy may be the most understated successful coach I've ever dealt with. I don't know how you feel. It's just it's just non plus just does his job goes home gets a win. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if the Hall of Fame would give him a ring. Well I think they, there's a lot of guys we'll be seeing eventually. Don't you think Calhoun comes to mind. That he, he Sutton comes to mind. I think eventually they'll all open the doors. Well, two at the line for Warwick and Syracuse leads. By two, they played twice these two teams last season, each one on the other's home court. Two very entertaining games. Jay, I'd love to be on the foul line against this zone. My goodness. Well, they got to turn and shoot it. Yeah, because the big guys are, the guards are being stretched. Well, that'll make fourth step up, and when he steps up, that'll open the baseline. Thomas a long miss, but Quinn ran it down. Falls had trouble on the catch. It doesn't matter. And usually you miss when you do that. You're right, Sean. He struggled with it, but the presence and patience. Already five lead changes. Mike Bray and the Irish up by a point. And how comfortable do you think Mike Bray feels watching his guards shoot it well? Uh, pretty satisfying. Fourth, a running jump hook that rattled out to the transfer from Arizona, Dennis Lattimore. With a body we die for. Speak for yourself. Falls <laughs> a very deep three. And fourth, the rebound. Pace. Boy, the more awkward the shot, the higher percentage that Josh Pace is going to make it. He's the most appropriately named player in the country. He has a great pace to his game. Relax, comfort zone. This is deep. And not. If you want to beat that zone, you have to hit shots from the perimeter. And Colin Falls is dropping them from deep. Giving new meaning to spacing, by the way. Oh, the day stretched the day. Mike Gray made the decision to go to a smaller lineup as he said Falls has deserved to be a starter. He has nine points already. McCroskey, a strong drive along the baseline. And Thomas really said it's just one more step could have sealed that baseline. Ski, a sophomore from the Bronx. Let's go on. Let's go on. Turn and look. And a rejection by Pace. And we'll see our first substitute of the night for Notre Dame after immediate timeout. Jordan Cornett will check in for Coach Bray. These two teams split their two meetings last year, each winning on the road. The first meeting here in South Bend. Hakeem Warwick with another huge dunk. That sparked a 13-0 run. Billy Edelin took over in the second half, 15 of his 17. After the break, the Cuse won by 11. But a month later at the Carrier Dome, Chris Thomas and Chris Quinn were on fire. Thomas at 25, Quinn at 22, as the Irish broke open a close game for an 84-72 victory. In the Carrier Dome, Notre Dame actually pulled Syracuse out of that zone and had him play some man-to-man. -man. He has done that over the years, though, Bayheim. Another deep thrust, four for ten now from three. And look at this assist. Oh, Roberts has got to be alert. I mean, that was hand-delivered on a platter. Great little defensive maneuver, Jay, by Thomas. Yeah, due to the alertness of Chris Thomas, who leads the Big East in steals. And Chris Thomas... I'll tell you, as important a player as Notre Dame has ever had. That's how good he has been over the last four years, at least in the Big East era. I don't, I don't think there's been a more important player than Chris glad, Thomas at Notre Dame. I was thinking of Austin Carr. John Schumate's bigger and tougher than you. Well, they're, bring him up. they're here. They're better players. No, I but. know what you mean. You're right about the Big East and leadership qualities too. I think they really a lot of burden on his shoulders. I mean, he's on his way to 2,000 points. 
He's going to have 800 assists by the time he's done leading this team every yeah. single year. He's the all-time leader in assists in the Big East. I mean, what a career he's had. Sure, and of course, you, people would say Murphy, very valuable. Garrity, very valuable. Uh, but uh, I understand totally what you mean. And tonight, career consecutive start number 112. That is also a Notre Dame record. For Chris Thomas, the senior from Indianapolis. His free throws have given the Irish a two point lead. This is Terrence Roberts, who just came into the ball game and had the miscue. They tried to get him to the rim because of the matchup with Quinn, and they finally do get it a little bit. Great play by Cornette. Jordan Cornette, only Lafonso Ellis has more blocked shots in Notre Dame history than the senior Cornette. Billy Edelin is in for Syracuse, number 14. He's played very well against Notre Dame in the last. Two meetings. This gives them another punch with Cornette in there for the medium range jumper or the deep one. Nice hustle. This is what he does wonderful. Comes up with anything loose. Cornette took it away from Pace, then Roberts rebounded the Thomas miss. All five starters have scored for Notre Dame. They continue to fire up the three point field goals with regularity. They've tried 12 already and have made four. Warwick fouled as he made a move. One thing you know with Hakeem Warwick, when he gets the ball and faces up, he is going to drive and he is going to spin. He wheels once he gets the ball and puts it on the floor. The length of his steps is what's extraordinary, too. Once he does use the drop step and extend to the rim, it's tough to cover. And this is exactly, he's going to come back to the middle. He goes down the middle, he does the same thing. You know what Jay's developed going left, coming back? Right and going right and going back left, which he didn't do early in his career. Pivots very well. I think you have to expect that when he puts it on the floor that he is going to wheel on you and spin. Fallen Falls was his first. Pace tried to score over Falls. It wouldn't go. And Chris Thomas came away with it. Hey, Falls is a really underrated defender. Stays solid, makes you shoot over, and he's got better size than people realize. He's not underrated right here. Deep. Russell Carter is in for the Irish, number 43. Sophomore guard from Paulsboro, New Jersey. Here's Carter. He's seen more minutes with good play lately. Gives him a real spark. Very athletic. A steal by Edel on a bad pass by Thomas. It's really forced Jim to play small. The Notre Dame people. McNamara had it rattle out. Oh, there's Warwick up there above the rim again. Clean it up. Well, he and Roberts just played volleyball with that ball. If you don't put a body and stick them, they can really elevate. Well, Bill, that's where shot blocking can become a weakness for you. Cornette went after the block, took himself out of the play, and left Francis all by himself to take on Roberts and Warren. And Cornette with a nice screen. Falls could knock it down. Falls now three for seven. All of these attempts tonight have been threes. Carter to steal. Thomas on the back for Carter, who couldn't get up to dunk it. He got stuck against the rim, but Francis hustling all the way there to follow it up. A he, little yoke on the brow on that one, but a nice cleanup as well. He's going to hear about that at training meal tomorrow <laughs> night, saying, you, you cost me an assist, baby. Adel in a hell ball with Jordan Cornette. And on the arrow, it'll go over to Notre Dame. Jay, you mentioned leadership. How about this? Chris Thomas, give me a little assist, but Carter misses it. How about Francis running the floor and finishing the play? You can give up on those plays sometimes to try to rest yourself, but not Turin Francis. The attitude of Chris Thomas, I just think, has changed. Though. Not that he had a bad attitude, thinking more about what can I do to help us win versus trying to take over, shoot the ball first mentality. Yeah, he's running a team now instead of worrying about scoring. And as a result, he's still scoring, but he's doing so many other things better. Here's the little screen I thought they should incorporate. Cornette trying to bump a guy on the wing. Lattimore has returned for the Irish. Craig Forth back in for Syracuse. Lattimore trying to drive on Forth instead of the pull up foul line jumper. Cornette batted it out of bounds. See, Cornette's got to dive in there. Once Lattimore gets the ball up near the top of the key there, the free throw line, and draws Forth to him, that's where Cornette cannot just space out to the perimeter. You know, Lewis Preston worked with Lattimore after the shoot around today. And he's getting the looks and taking him confidently. If he could only convert, it sure would help him. A little 2 3 zone Metal here for Notre Dame. Notre Dame leading by two, despite the fact they've shot just 33%. 
13 of their 21 attempts have been Pretty. threes. Fourth off a nice pass from McNamara. I think Thomas may have been man to man on McNamara. We'll check it out the next trip. Maybe a little boxer triangle, Jake. Boy, Notre Dame's zone, when they go zone, even if it was a box, is small because they don't keep their hands up. A great catch by Thomas on a high skip by Cornette. And Lattimore low on the shoulder and hold over fourth for an offensive foul, the second personal on Dennis Lattimore, the senior from Halstead, Kansas. It's Big Monday. Big time athletes on display in the Big East, as usual. Well, tonight is Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Fellas, you know what tomorrow is? Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday, presented by Toyota. It'll be the season debut of Super Tuesday at 7 Eastern Ohio State. Goes to Madison to take on Wisconsin. They own the nation's longest home win streak at 36 in a row. You can catch that action in high definition on ESPN HD. Then it's off to the SEC. Alabama takes on a tough young Arkansas team. Super Tuesday presented by Toyota tomorrow night. Last, uh, last game was it that Davidson played very well for Alabama. Mario, Mario Davidson. Davidson. Played very well. Kennedy Winston, Ernest Shelton, big time shooter from the perimeter. But how about Ohio State's win over Iowa? Terrence Dials played extraordinarily well in that game. They've got such good guards with Tony Stockman, JJ Sullinger. Back and forth throughout this one. Pace underneath and Warwick. Well, Jim Beheim thought he was fouled. They were trying to take advantage of the size and weren't patient enough. Very small ND team. Russell Carter for three. Now, who would have thought that Russell Carter would miss a dunk and hit a three? <laughs> Which is more satisfying, huh? Look at the matches here size-wise. Warwick with Jordan Cornette, an excellent defender. Warwick lost it on the way. thought he was bumped again. And Carter off the little fee from Quinn, and now Beheim living, and he's got to watch out. Timmy Higgins stuck the whistle in his mouth as if he was going to give Bayheim a technical, and now he's just staring at the veteran coach. But as Bayheim called the timeout, he was well out on the court and exploded at Tim Higgins. He thought Warwick was bumped on two possessions in a row. Both occasions he lost the ball without a whistle against Notre Dame. He was so quick, I thought it was Bing out there. Dave Bing, his former teammate, but this is the play that he wanted. Something well, this is the jumper earlier, but uh, Jimmy usually, if his team isn't playing well or lethargic, gets into it just a little bit. But this is a wonderful feed, don't you think, Jake? Nice feed. McNamara needed to do a better job defensively getting back in transition. And McNamara on the front of that zone did not even contest that shot by Carter, not giving a whole lot of respect to it. Pace. McNamara, Warwick, Robertson, fourth out of the mini timeout for Syracuse. Thomas, Quinn, Carter, Jordan Cornette, and Francis for Notre Dame. The Irish lead by five. The Carter just lead. Sorry, Sean. Carter gives up a better match on Roberts. Ten to shoot. McNamara, the junior from Scranton, Pennsylvania, will fire. And there's Roberts looking a lot like Hakeem Warren. Nobody stuck the guy though, but soft enough to be tipped. That's what McNamara's touch did. And that is where Roberts is at his best. Getting stick backs, tip jams. He's a lefty and really athletic. McNamara the steal. Cornette hit him hard. Didn't mean to. But McNamara is slow to get up. How about McNamara with the smarts of jumping into the defense to draw that foul? Yeah, he went right. He initiated the contact smart enough. What a tough guy. Must have banged his shoulder as he went. Look at three searching the numbers. And Cornette well, could have handled that just a little bit better. He could have helped him up, too. Well, I, I'm, I'm not talking about. Under the floor and they just walked away. I, I don't mean the sportsmanship, and I think at the angle he could have maybe, because he's so much taller and obviously he can elevate. Fortunately, Jerry's fine. You know, you know, you're right, Sean. You, you probably should do that, but you know, as a guy that, that played out there in these physical contests, yeah, he's got four teammates to pick him up too. I, w I wouldn't worry too long about that if no. I were on the opposing team. Well, he only played shot baskets in the backyard alone. <laughs> he was the guy that got knocked down. <laughs> uh, 
Were you picked up well, when you were knocked down? The replay too. It looked like it was a little uh, closer to an intentional foul than it was because his right hand kind of went around the waist. As yeah, the, yeah, but McNamara jumped into him. Sean, sure, that's basketball. I know it is. You want to do tennis? I'll call the office. <laughs> I'd like for you to do tennis. <laughs> and a matter of fact, the Australian Open is coming up. If we can book you. Oh, look at back there now. Nice read, and no way. Sure. He's going to give that one up. Protected it beautifully. Sure. McNamara picks himself up. Nicely done. <laughs> Syracuse back on top. Under six minutes to go in the half. A six-nothing run for the Orange after they faced the largest deficit of the game five. There's a toughness about McNamara, Jay. Certainly eluded Sean in his days at the Q's, but <laughs> the presence. Francis the miss, but it's tipped back up and in by Russell Carter, who's been a spark off the bench. He has seven. The new Torian Jones. Yeah, what a great talent he was for this team. But Jay, aren't you surprised there aren't more follows against the Syracuse zone? Yeah, Tip ins. But they're so good on the weak side of that zone and rebounding it. Carter almost stole that away from Ford. Ooh. McNamara feeling it. And McCroskey into the traffic to come away with the rebound. Under five minutes to go, first half. Big East action on Big Monday presented by Bud Light. A tight one throughout pace. Denied in his bid to give Syracuse the lead again, and Francis kept it alive for Thomas. And McNamara likes to refuse that high screen and roll and create a nice shot. Pace unable to convert. Jordan Cornett for three. He's been getting those open threes with regularity. He's made only 22% on 41 attempts coming in. If he could increase that percentage, it would really help their offense. You know what you love about Bayheim? Most coaches, after they had some threes drilled down them, they'd say, heck with it. Let's go, man. I I'm tired of watching this. Well, you know, He's going to stick with this zone. He, he sort of gambles that you're eventually going to. three. Eventually, you might miss them. Jordan Cornett called for the foul, his second. You know, McNamara was winded and he finally went over to Bayheim. I think Edelin's coming in for him. That's just a get. He hates to come out. And Wark at the line, 66% for the year. Yeah, he is getting a blow. He gives it all out there. Edelin and Robertson, fourth and McNamara out. Dennis Lattimore in and Jordan Cornett gets a nice hand. He's a crowd favorite here for all the hard work he does. Boy, Russell Carter got a nice hand as well. What an impact he had in the first half. He had seven points. The average is four a game for Mike Bray. Wearing that blue band around his wrist. That's for coaches versus cancer. Both he and Jim Beheim very actively involved in coaches versus cancer cause. They that raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Five turnovers now by Coach Bray's team. The Irish by four. All right, Chris, and we'd all like to thank Digger for the autographed copies of his book with the crayons uh, that were necessary to come with it. It is a coloring book. <laughs> for the children. <laughs> yes, and we are honored to have the third, fourth, and fifth copies mm -hmm. of this book that have moved off the shelves in the months that it's now been. A fourth book to the or public. a fourth edition? Third, fourth, and fifth copies. Oh, I see. Uh, it's by very the way, good. C Digger coach, C Austin shoot. We had Digger. run team run. It's in some time right. We you know, know, Mike Jarvis has a book as well. I just read his book, A Fine Tome. He's got a some practical advice for how you can go out and get a job. You guys might want to read it. I got one for free as well. But the, well, no by the way, there. the carnation <laughs> at dinner, the carnation at dinner last night, the Digger War was embarrassing. He did pick up the Those check days though. are over. Yeah, he did. Goodness, had a fever. Bigger upset than the win over UCLA. Warwick. Gets <laughs> Syracuse back within two. Seven Warwick. points for Warwick, averaging just under 20 per game. Quinn, Falls, Thomas, Francis Lattimore, the starting five back out there now for the Irish. And Francis, who's had a quiet half with all the threes being launched. He is fouled by Pace. Sean, you know what comes to mind? No Watkins with the wrist or the, uh, the thumb. Roberts gambled that time. 
the lane, you know, just sold out and permitted Francis to get to the rim. And this guy, Jay, I think is going to make them a terrific team in another month when he's healthy. I, I agree with that. I think he's got a long way to go. He's still very raw, but boy, he's got an NBA body and a lot of athletic ability. That surgery on the 30th of December on that thumb. But, but interestingly enough, though, in the big games that they've played, he's not played significant minutes. He's got most of his minutes against the quote unquote lesser teams that they play. But that sophomore class is key to them at the end of the year. You mentioned uh, McCroskey earlier, Nichols, Roberts, and Watkins. That's, that is a terrific team and playing off the ball and back in fresh. The Irish guy from Scranton. McNamara. Bayhai hopes that Daryl Watkins can play in about three weeks. Said he doesn't have to be 100% healthy then because mostly he's just going to rebound. He's not going to be handling the ball all that much. Warwick one on one on Francis. The jump hook is an air ball retrieved by Thomas. Notre Dame with the ball on a three point lead with under three minutes to go in the first half. Warwick's just getting muscled right now. He's got to use his athletic ability. And he didn't shoot it, Jay. Not a good look by Thomas. The defense was there. They get a break here with Roberts on the denial from the rear. I don't think that was a good call. Tim Higgins right in front of us did a pretty good look at it. And the call was on Roberts, his second. Incidentally, Carter's on McNamara at the other end. He may not get as many open looks now because of the size. Inbounding pass deflected by Roberts to Edelin. McNamara, nicely done. Slight of hand. And big on the ball on the inbounds caused it. Roberts, excellent. Boy, how about the hesitation, little shot fake by McNamara without traveling in transition? That was outstanding. He's clever, Jay. I mean, he really understands the game. So much more than a standstill jump shooter, even though he is great at that, too. Four good hands. Edelin had it, and then he was fouled. And Syracuse will have a chance for the lead as we approach two minutes left in the half there's the deflection now watch McNamara when he catches it that just little hesitation stop and go was able to get right around Colin Falls Falls set his feet trying to go after that shot and that's all it takes when you can shoot it as well as McNamara just a little fake will get your defender off balance uncoachable things they're natural they're well, innate for, for you yeah. they were well yeah, absolutely not for this guy McNamara fading away for three and the lead for the Orange. He didn't have much space, but he really uses his screens and fades well. Quinn just a little tardy. And he never changes his expression, McNamara. And a steal by Edelin. He's coming off a season high 22 minutes in their last game, the win at home Saturday night against Seton Hall. And McNamara fouled on the drive. It's really an interesting look with Edlin out there and Pace on the wings. They're not deep shooters at all. McNamara is the only deep shooter, but they break it down with the bounce. That time McNamara did it as well. well Edlin into the ball game is going to make a big difference. The more minutes he can play as this season goes along, that's going to free up McNamara to work off the ball. And those two together are a great combination in the backcourt. Back in for Notre Dame. 14 now for McNamara. The foul on Falls is second, the seventh on the team. It's the bonus. With a minute and a half to go in the half. Syracuse up by four. This is their largest lead. Notre Dame's trying to get cute on some of their passes. They need to make better passes and make some pass fakes. Well, the angles that Syracuse plays the zone just like that. Great hands again by Edelin. Roberts showing the ability to dribble. And good hustle back by Quinn to deflect the pass out of bounds. Well, normally you look at it, it's the 2 3 Tavern League zone, except he teaches angles. They do a great job stepping in here, Jay, and it makes it a tough delivery. Well, they move as the ball moves and they keep their hands and feet active. Now, I think that Roberts should have taken it all the way mm -hmm. right there. He's big enough and athletic enough. Get to the rim, make somebody foul you. And a mini timeout called by Notre Dame. It gives us a chance to look back at this date in college basketball history. <laughs> Jesuit rivals St. Joe's and Xavier had a memorable meeting on this date in 1976 in Cincinnati. 
in a double overtime marathon. Eight St. Joe's players fouled out, and the Hawks were forced to play with just the two who remained. Mike Borski and Dennis Kakert. From there, Xavier cruised to victory. And even then, Borski and Kakert were complaining they didn't get enough shots. <laughs> and I think Higgins and Clockerty had the game. Bill's teams frequently looked like they were playing with two. <laughs> Fourth, fouled. No, a held ball is the call. And with the arrow, it'll stay with Syracuse. We had five, but we were overmatched <laughs> <laughs> on the bench as well as on the floor. Pretty good reaction. He does so many little things for this club, Cornet. He's got such good timing. He's athletic. And he puts effort into his defense. And he's got a frame, too. I mean, he's a tough guy. McNamara, well off and forth, batted it out of bounds. And Jimmy just saying to Jerry, you know, maybe just relax a little bit, get into the offense. He gets the adrenaline emotion going, McNamara. Makes him special, too. If you can get a quick shot here, you can get a two for one. Now, it's got to be a good shot for Notre Dame. Nice job overloading the zone. You can turn and kick. Francis, a tough fade away. He knew Roberts was going to go up to try to block it. So he had to put a little more altitude on it. And a whistle for another timeout. Notre Dame again calling a 30 second timeout with 28.3 to go in the half. Uh, Jay and Sean, Mike's done a nice job prying against the zone. Different looks. Here's that overload, Jay. They end up with the center. They can go opposite with this as well. Nobody. Doubled down to try to get it out of the hands of Turin Francis, and that very well could have been a foul on Craig Forth. It's not much of one, but when you bring those arms down, Hakeem Warwick going to come back into the ball game for Syracuse right now to give them another weapon. JD, you want to double down though when you've got those weapons outside? That's really the problem playing Notre Dame on the perimeter. Well, I think you can get in there and reach. Yeah, maybe. Bit. I'm not sure that Turin Francis is all that great of a passer out of a double team. I'd like to see him find out. hit an open shooter and find him first. You can at least scrape down there. Notre Dame will pick up full court out of their timeout. Pace with Edel and McNamara, Warwick and fourth. The chance to take the last shot of the half for the Orange leading by two. This will be the decision maker. What you really have to do is box, especially. Hakeem Warwick will jam it back in on your skull. McNamara has taken 12 shots, twice as many as any other Syracuse player. Pace with the seconds running out. And the Orange take the lead in a halftime. Wow. Jerry McNamara pacing them with 15 points. Chris Thomas scored two, both from the line. Notre Dame led by four with four and a half minutes left, but Syracuse ends the half on an 11 to 3 run. Halftime here in South Bend, the Orange by four. Let's send you back now for the UPS halftime report. Here's Chris Fowler. Big Monday of this Big East basketball season. Syracuse and Notre Dame a back and forth first half. The Orange with a four point lead. And fellas, it was Notre Dame with a five point lead late in the half. Then, uncharacteristically, a little sloppy with the ball. Yeah, they started turning it over, tried to get a little too clever against that Syracuse zone. And Syracuse very active. They're very long. They get a lot of deflections. Mm -hmm. The problem was, those were live ball turnovers that the Orange could take the other way and get easy scores. Well, Jimmy, uh, 700 plus wins. Almost. Big Great inside people. 700 minus with. Uh, <laughs> Got to go inside. Get a game involved. Well, what's a number for crying out loud? You only had all half. He'll have it by the end of the year, anyhow. Crying out loud. 44% shooting. Most of their shots were from beyond the arc. And Hakeem Oric with seven, including that memorable dunk. Send it in. And how about the read, Jay? The angles. The little guy taking it to the tin. Jerry McNamara, three out of ten from three-point range, 15 points in the half, leading all scores. He's the only player in the game in double figures. John McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, delighted to have you with us from the sold-out Joyce Center. More than 11,000 on hand. Watch the first of two meetings in this Big East regular season between the Irish and Orange. 
Balls Thomas Quinn, Lattimore and Francis start the half. And it's Thomas who did not have a field goal in the first half for three. A resilient player, Chris Thomas. McCroskey to fourth with McNamara, Warwick, and Pace for the Orange. Uh, they had him before Warwick in the lane. Fourth didn't go down to him. You're going to see them go inside Jay with regularity. He's got to shoot that. He's sort of short armied it. Well, he, he palmed it and then tried to like drop it in the basket instead of. But every time he catches it, Bill, he's trying to face up and wheel on you. There is there. Drop step to the middle. But look, he just hung on to it too long and then tried to let go of it at the end. He shot the ball on the way down. Notre Dame turned it over nine times in the first half. The most they've ever had in the half under Mike Bray in his fifth year is 10. A couple of times against Syracuse back in 2001. Quinn it rolls in and Notre Dame goes back up. That was all handling the trap on the baseline by Francis. Otherwise, they get a turnover and a nice cross court look. The Irish average 23 point attempts per game. They've shot 17 already. We're only a minute and change into the second half. You know, in the key, Notre Dame much more active on offense. They are moving harder to guard in that 2 3 zone. Strong drive by McCroskey. And he was fouled. And Jay, this is a key thing. I mean, they, they like to trap below the foul line, Syracuse. But look at the presence of Francis, patient, finding someone, and then the reverse. And a great pass by Colin Falls, drawing two defenders to him. And there was no reason for McCroskey to come that far over. And McNamara was not at all happy with it. There John Flaugherty has ruled this a two shot foul. The crowd and Mike Bray thought that McCroskey was fouled on the drive. The whistle certainly seemed to be while McCroskey was well away from the basket, but they're going to give him the two free throws. And yeah. Mike Bray not wasting a whole lot of time arguing over it. He's telling his team to box out. What can you do, right? With this team, you better box out. It's interesting. Thinks that justice is served as McCroskey. Just a 53% foul shooter missed the first. One of the things you have to worry about in boxing out is getting pushed underneath. Now they're going to pinch on both sides. He missed this both, guy. But Warwick is there, had trouble gathering it in. And there it was, getting pushed under. McNamara with Thomas right up on him. Tough shot, an air ball, fourth. He's fouled before the shot. Fouled on the floor. Sean, Chris Thomas is stepping up. Now he's taking McNamara and he forced him into a very difficult shot. He's been banging him. He's been really working on the defensive end. That's an area they certainly would love to see improvement in his game, and he has done it early. And there he was, Thomas creating the turnover on the inbounding play. Lattimore. And this is in. Got a timeout. Syracuse Jim Beheim wondering when his team is going to come out of the locker room. Been a dreadful first two minutes of the half for the Orange. And a couple of nice bounces to begin the half. What can the Irish on display here in South Bend? Notre Dame leads by four. They've outscored Syracuse eight to nothing here in the first two minutes of the half. Anytime you play Syracuse on free throw blockouts, they will try to push you under. Watch Akeem Warwick. He pushes Dennis Lattimore underneath the basket, clears the space, and gets the rebound. You have got to get right into him and drive him back. And Jay, I would put a bigger guy on the other side and let somebody handle fourth alone. I wouldn't let that particular guy sort of disarm people with his length. Well, there's noticeable in the first two minutes. Thomas wants McNamara when Chris is on defense, and he is all over Jerry McNamara in the first couple of minutes of this half. Well, that just shows the guts that this kid has. He wants that challenge. And Jerry with a back screen, he's got to play relaxed, don't force it. Bad pass by fourth with Warwick thinking about an alley oop for a dunk, and Thomas a bit too frisky, called for his second person. Well, he had to reach because he wasn't able to keep his feet in front of him, and that's one thing. Chris Thomas had microfracture surgery over the summer, and his knee, in my opinion, still not 100%. He's not as quick laterally as he was. Tough look again, and nice defense by Francis. Wow. For the crowd living, and Mike Bray is too, who was warned to get back by the bench. The crowd thought that Warwick went over the back to get that held ball. Well, he and did. He might have a point. Yeah, he did. There's no. Yeah, that's a foul. 
Francis had the inside position and he had the ball first. Syracuse forcing the issue without running their stuff. Very tough to get a lob without a back screen. And then inbounding pass thrown away by Pace. He couldn't find anybody open. Had to get rid of it. And did not connect in the corner. Syracuse still has not scored in this half. It ain't nothing run for the Irish. They haven't missed a shot. Quinn with the first miss and fourth the rebound. And that was one of those catch and shoots. They had falls. They were running a set play. Don't rush it. Pace wiggles into the lane oh. and gets the roll for the first basket of the half for the Orange. I think he's only missed one of those. He chips more ribs with his shots. I mean, soft and slithers in a crawler. He's got that old man game. He's going to be able to play this same game well into his 40s. Francis, nicely down over fourth. Well, that entry passes there because of the great deep shooters. Well, he's starting to look more and more comfortable in that low block. He's taking up more space. Francis has 10. That leads Notre Dame. McNamara. Warwick just ripped it away and was fouled on the put back. I think they got Francis on it, but that's what he does. He's got the great extent. Uh, the other end defensively, you are in a dilemma. Look at the stretch of the DJ. You're going to get that entry pass simply because there is an area to recover. The distance is too great. Second foul on Francis, the team's fourth. And here's Warwick. But Chris Thomas had that rebound right in his hands, and Warwick came out of nowhere to take it out, to take it away from him. Warwick struggling from the free throw line. Francis goes out. Jordan Cornett is in one out of five from the strike for Hakeem. 12th all time score at Syracuse. 1,672 career points. Oh boy. That almost looked like he was trying to bank it in. He Wide left, huh? And left, yeah. Warwick spent. Just about every day of the summer in Manly Fieldhouse in the Syracuse campus shooting hundreds of jumpers a day trying to extend his range. McNamara saw that pass coming. Out of bounds, last touch by Falls, out of bounds, says Tim Higgins. It could have been a foul by Falls. That's, that's what I think exactly he let him go. Tim Higgins yeah, said that's what rather Tim the yeah. foul. But that's that trap that set it up. Francis escaped earlier. They got a jump shot. That time for Mike Gray. Lattimore trapped, didn't come up with a good delivery. Well, I love the reaction from Tim Higgins there. You could, he was right in front of us. He said to Falls, you want the foul? <laughs> Higgins just sat in traffic for two hours. He didn't want to hear any of that. Yeah, these officials are not in a good mood. They got here late because they were stuck in some horrendous traffic. Got here uh, less than a half an hour before game time, which had them anxious. It's incredible how McNamara uses his screens that time just spaced out to the corner a little flare got a great look and then the foul on Roberts on the rebound and he never stops moving that's why he's so hard to guard and that foul was on Falls. so Tim Higgins got Falls his foul there seconds later Syracuse with the bagel from the line in this half 0 for 5 as Roberts missed the first he needs to stay on the line he's backing up as he lets it go stay over that one yep the the first, sophomore from Jersey City New Jersey out of St. Anthony that great high school program coached by Bob Hurley senior were you at Syracuse when they struggled from the foul line yeah, years ago years. well that I mean, the Oklahoma State game this year certainly hurt them uh, coming late in the season you got to knock those babies down and the foul is Francis went to the bucket and the mock cheer from the sellout crowd right here at the Joyce Center the fouls have been piling up on the Irish and not on the orange Third foul on Roberts. First team foul of the half for Syracuse. And here's Francis at the line. 61% free throw shooter for the junior from Boston, Massachusetts. Boy, he's got, a, he's got an easy pass delivery. He can step in the lane and catch the ball anytime he wants because of the stretch of this defense and it's one on one in the center spot. But, but still as a as a post defender you've got to deny that flash. Oh I agree. You got to get in front of them. You got two other support people around you. Make them lob it over the top. See if they can do it. Switch now Jay went from the man to the two three. 
have to be active with their hands. Notre Dame has been keeping their hands by their sides. A lot easier to get passes through. You know why I like this? Because they've only got the one deep shooter in McNamara. And Edlin gets down with Quinn. First foul on Billy Edelin and a timeout here in South Bend with the home standing Irish leading by five. This game just one third of Big Monday presented by Bud Light right after us the Connecticut Huskies at nine and two head to Oklahoma to take on the Sooners and at midnight Mountain West action UNLV and new coach Lon Kruger visit Salt Lake to take on Utah Big Monday presented by Bud Light continues later tonight not only on the network but also for Bill Rafter. <laughs> I'll be on the streets just to check on the weather. By one of the running rebels earlier this year Lewis Amundsen had 22 points and 22 boards against Auburn that's a best rebounding performance I've seen all year I watched that game he was incredible blasting games their point guard if he can run the show play within himself Lon could have a heck of a run come stretch time when I, got, when I got 22 rebounds off 20, 20 of my misses this is the fifth time in the last three games now that Colin Falls has been fouled shooting a three. It happened three times last Wednesday at Seton Hall, once against Villanova here Saturday, and now Warwick hits him. As Mike Bray said, he has turned this into an art form. Well, you know, if you're a coach, you're saying to the young man, put it on the floor, get fouled once in a while. Coach, I'll just take a three, they'll foul me. He does have a knack. He doesn't stick the leg out like a lot of Reggie Miller might. At well, that time, his leg was out a little bit, but ordinarily, you're right. It's just straight up and down. They still hit him. As Mike Bray said, they're so anxious to run out. When they see him open shooting a three, the opponents know that's not good. I have to get out there on him, and they run into him. It's also the scatter report has forewarned that wing player to get out and don't let him get the open look. Force him to put it on the deck. Well, Mike says he gets fouled on threes all the time in practice. His own guys do it. And he's a 93% foul shooter this year, too, so it's almost an automatic three on the board. Largest lead for either team. Syracuse has scored three points in five minutes in this half. McNamara rattles in a two. And Thomas sort of gambled, snuck a peek, and McNamara is so clever getting the puppies in the right area. His first points of the second half. Chris Quinn, junior from Dublin, Ohio, near Columbus, falls. And Warwick right out on him. Boy, look how this zone extends. They can test every pass. Boy, and Edelin's had great hands on defense. Created a number of those Notre Dame turnovers late in the first half. And that one there, Pace had it knocked away by Quinn. Fourth, out of control, spinning like a top for an offensive foul. Now, that's Pace's fault, though. He shouldn't have given it to him. It's not his kind of shot. Should have kicked it back out. Well, he can hit a six-footer. He needed to take that uh, jumper, don't you think? I, I know, but he, that's not his game. I, I, you know well, what I mean? He's not going to look for it. But get it back out. I mean, yeah. he, if you don't want to take that shot, fine. But don't just bull into the lane. Pass it back out. And Jim Beheim targeting him right now. You know, he, they had stepped the zone up because of him. They're going to start getting entry passes again. That's one thing Fourth does is protects the middle. Fourth smart enough to know what to do. He's a 3-8-6 student. Oh. And the crowd got that late whistle they were looking for as Warwick got tangled up with Jordan Cornette. And Hakeem Warwick called for his third foul. So he has three and Roberts with three. You know, Sean, you mentioned the late whistle. Late whistles have never bothered me because they are outcome related. What bothers you is the anticipatory whistle here off the weak side. Notre Dame to a quick header off the inbound play, and they caught Syracuse sound asleep. Quinn from the elbow. The lead back to eight for the Irish, six minutes into the second half. They must stay at home with McNamara. They can back off. Nice cut by what a look by England. The dive to the 10 and then Roberts sent it in. And in the lead six. And that one quieted the crowd that was fully engaged after Quinn scored on that very quick hitter off the inbound play. Uh, Francis, not a good play, Jay, huh? No. Too exuberant trying to establish position. And he got called for the foul. His third. Yeah, clever play. Just a dive by Edlin. Sets this up. Magnificent analysis on the run. Just a simple little give and go. That's where the active hands have to discourage that pass. 
Uh, Edlin looking to slip, and he had paid. Nice steal by Thomas. The school's all time steals leader. And he wisely waited for help as it was one on two. This could evolve into a foul shooting contest. Team fouls are six Notre Dame and five Syracuse with 13 minutes to go. Edel it again. And they use the traffic to protect. McNamara does it well. So does Edlin. Boy, why do you want to attack? I agree. Why do you want to attack Warwick's side down there? He's so long and athletic. Go to the other side. Make somebody else beat you. And a nice play by McNamara here. You know he fouled. Pick up Quinn. There's the sportsmanship you were looking for. First foul on McNamara. He was probably stunned he missed that wide open three. Generally, that's a layup when he is as open as he was from the top of the key. There you go. So attack this side. I mean, you want to get ball reversal, but you leave it on Warwick's side. He's so long, he's going to affect things. Well, the baseline pass to the middle is where Elon's magnificent. He steps in on the postman. Notre Dame is five out of seven from the floor in this half. Shot clock down to seven, and the kick ball will give him a full shot clock as Edelin stuck his leg out. Edelin, of course, left the team in February last year for personal reasons, returned this fall, but did not play in their first five games of the year. Thomas, along with a three ball, Francis ripped it away, and he was fouled on the way back to the bucket. That's a big time rebound. The snatch getting after it. Some guys take trips off. You wonder why Francis can't do this all the time, Jay. Well, Mike Bray had sent Dennis Lattimore to the scorer's table to come in for Turin Francis. After he made that play, he called Lattimore back and sat him down again. That's how important that play was for Francis staying in the game. Well, we had him in the Seton Hall game, uh, Sean. Remember he had about four minutes, really got involved? And then he'll just do it. To back off a little bit. Sometimes it looks like he's not quite as involved in the proceedings. As he otherwise might be. That was the fourth foul on Hakeem Warren. Yeah. A huge development. And the fouls are going to turn out to be an issue here in the second half. It wasn't a story in the first half, but we've had many more whistles here in the second. Syracuse over the limit with that foul. So the Irish will shoot for the rest of the game. 12 10 left. Notre Dame by seven. It's Robertson at the ball game with. Fourth pace, McNamara and Edelin, a small lineup for Syracuse. A little nickel dimer with the body rub. Pretty good speed, though, when he turns the corner, McNamara. Holland Falls called for the foul, and that's his fourth. It also puts the Irish over the limit. Number 15, Holland Falls, his fourth. Welcome back. Oh, yeah, man, how you And welcome back to South Bend in the first big Monday of the year presented by Bud Light, Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. Notre Dame at home leading Syracuse by seven. Syracuse at the line with Josh Pace, the Orange, one out of six from the line in this half, one out of seven. Shades of yesteryear mm. for Syracuse fans. Meanwhile, Notre Dame is six out of seven from the line in this half. The fouls a story, Falls and Warwick, each on the bench with four. Roberts playing with three. Francis out for a breather right now, replaced by Lattimore. Lattimore, Jordan Cornett, Quinn Thomas, and Carter. A three guard look for Notre Dame. This is where fourth is more effective. He steps up and plays the postman. Jordan Cornett. And the long rebound out to McNamara. Ooh, Ooh. Carter took out Thomas. And look out as Jordan Cornett, or rather, uh, Thomas was down in the lane and almost got landed on as Roberts went to the bucket. Russell Carter just took out his own teammate Chris Thomas and knocked him to the floor. Now McNamara is great at that by the way Jay. that's one of his specialties as the traffic is running down the floor he maneuvers and hides behind guys and is extremely effective. He makes the free throw to get them within six. Jordan Cornett goes out and Corinne Francis back in for Notre Dame. 
McNamara just told Roberts to stay up there on the line, not to move back. And he got the favorable bounce off the iron. Roberts had a high game this year of 20 against Hofstra. Jim Beheim talking to us before the game about what a good team Hofstra is. Oh, it's Tom really quick. Tommy Pacor has really got an outstanding guard. Stokes on the perimeter. There's a lot of Judio. About this being the first game outside of New York State for Syracuse, and Beheim kind of bristled to that and said, "Well, it's not exactly a short trip down to New York City. About five hours for us. We have been on airplanes, and we played some good teams: Mississippi State, Memphis." Oklahoma State they were all in the top 25 as the season started. Well plus a lot of teams do what Syracuse has been doing. I mean Kansas just left for the first time to play at Kentucky. You know, Duke's only road game really has been uh, what against Oklahoma at Madison Square Garden. That's right. Which is Duke's, essentially Cameron Indoor Stadium North. That and the Meadowlands right The right one of those record there is as good as Cameron's. Roberts called for his fourth foul so major foul trouble inside now for Syracuse Warwick on the bench with four there's pace running the floor Roberts playing with four pace a short miss and the rebound Francis that's one of those you've got to finish it's very tough to dribble the gap against Syracuse too a lot of people talk about it Sean this is where you can do some damage here. especially with Edelman he's had great hands all Look at night that. long there he is again they threw that one right to him and Look at that. Use the rim as he clever and Edlin on your cue, Sean. Gets in the lane, creates havoc, and then the run out. And a timeout for Notre Dame. With the lead down to three for the Irish. Two timeouts left for Notre Dame midway through the second half. All set up by this, Jay. He just knows when he go baseline to face up. And how about this one? Those guards so savvy. Savvy in getting the steal, the nice pass, and the beautiful finish. That's the way to run a break. Unbelievable. Right? Just go right at the defender, slither by, use that rim to ward off. Bernie Fine, longtime assistant. Everybody talks about his work with the big men. He does a lot of work with the perimeter guys, too. Bernie, one of those dedicated, he's been there with Jimmy from day one, right? Yeah, he's been a great coach yeah. for a long time. Seven steals for Billy Edelin. And Syracuse within three. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, with Joyce Setter in South Bend for the Orange and the Irish in the first big Monday presented by Bud Light. Falls to Quinn, Thomas, Francis Lattimore, the fivesome for Coach Bray. They Under 10 minutes to go now. They close down dribble drive. They force you to execute with the ball. But not a good one. And the big guys are standing too much. They've got to move more. They are easy to guard when they just stand and post. They've got to get behind that zone and flash into the middle and keep moving. Edelman with pace McNamara. Roberts with his four fouls and fourth for Syracuse. Nice slip. Should have been closer to the goal. Whoa, an air ball from about 12 feet for Roberts. That's great basketball. Thomas dove on the floor. McNamara held the ball. Mike Bray needs to be careful. He thought for sure Thomas was fouled as he had the ball on the floor. And Mike did a dance up and down that sideline, was a long way on the court when he realized he needed to get back. Well, this is like the rebound play as well. Well, the guy's going over the top, but I love this. This is what all out effort. Well, that's a foul. I mean, he had the ball, they fouled him. I mean, that is hustle, not reward, and they wound up losing the arrow over it. Nice now turning. Disperse. Oh. Falls fouled by Edelin. It'll be a one and one for Colin Falls. It's the second foul on Edelin. The ninth team foul against Syracuse. It's amazing when you can catch and shoot how quickly people are attracted to you. Falls couldn't even get this rhythm, and Edelin was there with the giveaway. One thing Notre Dame has not been played by tonight, those long stretches of stagnant half-court offense, which has been a problem in the non-conference schedule, and in all candor, they played a pretty weak non-conference schedule. I think that their offense has started to come around since they've gone with this three guard lineup since Colin Falls has been inserted into the lineup and they've moved Jordan Cornett more to a four man position where he's now rotating with Dennis Lattimore and Tarin Francis. I think their offense has really picked up. 
And sure, they beat Indiana, as we both all know. And of course, Seton Hall and Villanova, they seem to have found their stride because Jay Wright's team, everybody said, played great without Sumter. That's a heck of a win. Jim Beheim was saying with Sumter, he thinks Villanova might be as talented as anybody in the league. And Jay Wright has certainly had a lot of bad luck there with the phone card scandal and a lot of injuries. He just hasn't really been able to have his full team together, it seems, as long as he's been the coach there. Lattimore. And a good rebound in traffic by Roberts. Notre Dame's got more than five minutes without a field goal. Fourth, a nice catch and score. And Syracuse is back within three, eight and a half to go. The big guy with a nice sprint and McNamara, the courage to make the delivery. Well, you can tell McNamara trusts him yep. to throw the ball that deep. And a great job by Fourth to run the floor and beat everybody down. Warwick has come to the table to check back in with his four fouls. Quinn, a quick catch and shoot for three. Now what happened there is McNamara helped when he didn't have to. He was not happy with himself on that particular play. Notre Dame doesn't know what they're in. And they survive anyway as Francis knocked it out for Thomas. Irish with the ball up by six. Thomas, the pull up. Francis. Blocked by Roberts. He and it comes off a leg to McNamara who looks to run. The pull up for three. And sneaking in Edelin for Syracuse. And he knew they were going to be at the rim. The nice ball fake got him the open look. I thought Francis should have kicked it out on the other end, Jay. What a great combo Edelin and McNamara make in the backcourt. Can you imagine if these two had been playing together all last year and then all this year? Extraordinary. Lattimore, the dump down, a little bit too hot to handle. That might be a big sequence, fellas. We look back on Thomas missing the pull up, Francis losing it, then Syracuse scoring at the other end because it looked like Notre Dame was looking at a run with the crowd into it and some momentum on their side. Uh, right now, McNamara playing off the ball. Pace and Edlin can do some posting up or create off the bounce, and he does well. That's a tough shot for him. Wow. Ah. Josh Pace, and all of a sudden, it's a two point game. Syracuse has actually cut into the deficit with Warwick on the bench still at the table waiting to come back in as is Colin falls for Notre Dame with his four fouls. 16 turnovers tonight for Notre Dame. Oh Quinn bounces into a three and now a chance for the lead with a three ball for Syracuse. Roberts the dunk off the feed from Pace. Man, those three guys on the perimeter all can get in the lane, turn heads, and find people. Pace on the money with that delivery. 30-second timeout, Notre Dame. The eight-point lead completely gone, even with Hakeem Warwick on the sidelines for Syracuse. 6-16 to go and one timeout remaining for the Irish. Boy, in transition, Syracuse has been very effective. It's not that they're getting layups necessarily, but getting into the lane, drawing the defense, the nice kick to Terrence Roberts and Roberts, the fine finish. How about the different ways Syracuse can play? I mean, we're talking about them small here, Jay. Watkins comes back. I mean, they got some size. Now, what did you say at halftime? Across the baseline, they might touch. Yeah, you put them from sideline to sideline and had them extend their arms. They might be able to touch fingers and cover the entire width of the length of the baseline. They are long and lean. I think the one thing that Syracuse doesn't get credit for, as they should, is they're very good in transition. Mm -hmm. Tie game falls back in for Notre Dame with Thomas Quinn, Jordan Cornett, and Lattimore. Francis out at the moment. And Hakeem Ward back in for the Orange. Edelin almost had another steal. Thomas kept the ball, missed the shot. The rebound went over the head of Lattimore to Ward. Now that's the second time he's been able to crack the zone with the dribble drive. Got good looks. Well, they need to continue to do it because I agree those are good shots and that will soften that zone a bit. Spin back, lefty. Pace. The first lead for Syracuse in 14 minutes. Their previous lead was 38-37 with 19-37 left. Boy, Josh Pace is the best driver that doesn't have blow-by speed. Amazing self-control. Lattimore determined. But off the mark, and it's Pace who's taken over the game right now for Syracuse. 
McNamara thought about it. Pace. Thomas saw that one coming, but Syracuse retains possession. Five minutes to go, 20 seconds to shoot. Warwick one on one with Jordan Cornett, an excellent defender. They give him the ISO. He's got to do more with it. And he scores over Cornett. Syracuse by four, just nine for Warwick. That's 11 under his average. And we mentioned stagnation, a problem all year long on offense for Notre Dame. They're in a rut now with continue with a rock from Thomas, rebounded by fourth. And Chris had done a great job cracking the zone, and that time they settled. Thomas is one for 11 from the floor, one for eight from three point range. He does have seven rebounds and eight assists. Well, 2 3 zone right now for Notre Dame. Colin Falls hasn't had a field goal since 12 37 remained in the first half. The lock to Warren from Adelin. And what a setup. Warren had pointed from the corner. Adelin silently has been so destructive for this Syracuse team. Mike Bray looked like he wanted to call his last time out and I think Chris Thomas might have waved him off. That's how much faith Bray has in the judgment of Chris Thomas. Well they're also in that TV. Yes they are in the zone for immediate timeout on the next whistle falls. They need it. They don't get it. Fourth corrals the rebound and got it to McNamara before he hit the deck. They are Bray senses it is slipping away. They're mentally tough Syracuse too Sean. I mean, they got a lot of heady veterans. They're methodical. Mm -hmm. Syracuse 15 and one ranked seventh in the nation. Two and oh in the Big East. Notre Dame 10 and two unranked. They were ranked in the early season. They're also two and oh in the Big East. Trying to go to three and oh for the first time. Ready. Pace off the pass from Warwick. Well and they snuck a peek. Warwick looked over his shoulder and a wonderful read by Josh Pace. And Mike Bray can't wait for that media timeout any longer. He will use his last timeout with 2.57 to go. Syracuse, not long ago, down by eight, now up by eight, 14 unanswered for the Orange. Uh, this is just a, a great look at the point, Jay. Adlin on the money. I mean, that's just good coordination. Not really a bump in the back there. Fourth tries to tie a guy up. No, just a set play, bringing somebody. Right up toward the ball and occupying the middle of that defense and the screen by fourth helped a lot too. Not too bad the little guy uses the rim. I think the story of the night for Syracuse guys the reemergence of Billy Edelin who has really been kind of an afterthought so far this year. Well Beheim on the at half court with all of us was saying he hasn't played as well as he's capable of but more and more minutes I think you'll see him play to this level and he's always had his best games against Notre Dame. He, yes. He's played very well against the Irish. He came out against Seton Hall. I think he played 22 minutes at seven points two rebounds two steals and played the most he has played this season. Last January right before he left the team Edelin had 17 points against Notre Dame in 03 he had 26 against the Irish he has played very well and he has the career high seven steals tonight and he's so disruptive in the zone I mean, now they've switched him be interesting why right they, he's been on the right side of the zone out top now he's on the left maybe because of Quinn now Warwick has switched sides as well maybe McNamara likes to be on Warwick side. That could oh. So would I. Well, Edelin just missed his eighth steal there. Thomas lost the dribble for just a second and got it back. Ten to shoot for Notre Dame. Quinn from the elbow, well short. Hayes had it stripped away by Quinn, who was fouled. That could be a big sequence. Well, that was Hayes one. had the rebound and a chance to continue the momentum, but Quinn stripped it back. And he'll shoot two after. The media timeout, which comes with 2.32 remaining here in South Bend. Well, the Irish trying to keep the faith here. Even though Notre Dame has missed 12 of its last 13 shots, they haven't scored in five minutes and 43 seconds, so that has helped fuel this Syracuse run. Had the late run in the first half to take a four point halftime lead, then open the second half very slowly to allow Notre Dame to go up by eight. Chris Quinn with Lattimore now on the bench is at the free throw line. 
to shoot two, and he's another one of their very good free throw shooters. 83% for the year. And Sean, to uh, respond to that drought, it's the 2 3 zone lives. I was just going to say that all these shots have been contested. It's not like Notre Dame's just been missing. They've been missing with a hand in their face. They're trying to make shots. It's just difficult circumstances. It goes full. And now the option of three handlers really comes into play, the giveaway by Carter. You wonder if they'll do that intentionally for the rest of the game, at least while they're down by this much. Syracuse has had a tough night from the line. Carter. Fouls pace will be at the line when we come back. And they could be lengthy final minutes as it looks like Notre Dame will foul liberally if it has to. Billy Edel in a big story tonight. Well, it's so many areas of the game that he can dominate, Jay. And we see the ability to read passing lanes. How about this look? Well, he is such an active defender as well. Seven steals on the ball game for Billy Edelin. A guy who has played limited minutes since he has come back to the team. 22 minutes against Seton Hall, the most he's played this year. And I tell you, he is really making himself a force now to be reckoned with for the rest of the season if he can keep this up. And always in the right place in the zone, something you really can't appreciate unless you play against this zone. He turns you, forces you into uncomfortable positions. One and one for Pace. It's another rock. He's over two from the line. Speaking of Syracuse is eight out of 18 from the line. Yeah that is a tough position for them lately. Thomas Quinn falls Jordan Cornette and Francis for Notre Dame down by six with a terrific three point shooting team and they need to go to that weapon they'll try it miss it they've had one field goal now in the last 12 minutes and fourth is fouled. That's one for 12 now for Chris Thomas. Just a struggle all game long offensively. They had run a play. They ran an overload and Chris sort of settled. He wasn't patient enough. But at some point they've got to get guys into that gap between defenders somehow. And they did it twice. We noted Chris got two good looks. Thomas but they've gotten away from it again. That is the 10th team foul. So it's two shots the rest of the way for Syracuse. They're three out of 10 from the line in this half. Fourth, 68% for the year. That's his first free throw of the night. How many credits did Jim say he has? He's got like almost 145 yeah, credits. He's it's a degree ball. in every major at the school if he wants. A, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, 3.86 grade point average in inclusive education and geography, an academic All-American. Seven point lead for Syracuse. You don't talk much about your academic exploits. Francis <laughs> lays it in. The lead five for Syracuse, and here comes the pressure. They don't want to foul McNamara, one of the best free throw shooters in the country over his career. Down a little bit this year at 82%, but still excellent. But creative, they got something into the teeth of the D. And that ends the lengthy field goal drought. Well, they get, that's a five second count, pretty close. Pretty close, but now you don't want to foul, Jay. Get a, don't give they got to give him a bump and they use the high five here. Well they got to trap him here. There it is. And they got fourth goes right to the rim and the foul line filled. Need a shot with the clock at two. Oh! That, is, that kid is so tough. Oh! <laughs> Sideline delivery. With the shot clock at two in a must shoot situation. Francis. Offensive foul. How about this one. I mean this is scrape. He's got to worry about his heels being on the sideline there. Look at that. As you would say. Onion. Oh no, the nylon delivery. At a Scranton PA. That's why they bring the bus loads up to the Q's. That is deep and he never took his eyes off the rim. Big time. Boy mass exodus here from this sellout crowd. He has emptied a few buildings by the wow. way. I mean these folks it was like that one was the cue to go home. They can't get in the aisles here fast enough. Boy was that big time. Unbelievable. They got everything they wanted. And you know what's interesting though. Just the subtle aspect of Syracuse. Everybody did the right thing even though he ended up with a tough shot. Fourth slipped to the box. Warwick went to the foul line. There were some options and yet the best of all was the long trade. But what's amazing about that is you know that Jerry McNamara is tired. I mean, he's played a lot of minutes in this game, but he's able to summon up the energy to, to stay solid, to square up, 
and to make that shot under that kind of pressure. That, that's awesome. He's a gamer. I mean, that's really what he is. I mean, he Whoa. responds to the situation. Borg is now one out of eight from the line with those two misses. He came in at 66% for the year. And a lot of his misses, most of them, are way off. Falls. The three wouldn't stay down. Quinn hustled the ball. Thomas has to launch a three. And Warwick takes it out of the traffic, and he was fouled with 30 seconds to go. Remember the first half, talking about the zone and the three-point shooting? Notre Dame's making him the philosophy of Jim Beheim is you can't make them all game, mm -hmm. particularly because they do, they do attack you, Jay. It's not like they're sitting back letting you shoot them. How about the game coming up next? This young Connecticut team, Jim Bam, is about the size of Connecticut. He thinks later in the year when the, they all get on the same page, get used to playing with each other with that young team, they're really going to be tough, but maybe not ready for that trip to Oklahoma tonight, you think? Well, uh, Boone may be one of the best, if not the best rebound in the country. Well, he's averaging a double double yeah. and, and shooting 64% from the field, leading the Big East. I mean, I think the key question for them is, is their guard play on the road. And, yeah, Marcus Williams just a sophomore is leading the Big East in assists over seven per game. I think the, the issue is can they guard the ball as well as they have in years past their pressure this year is different. Thomas four three it's been that kind of a turnabout here for Notre Dame they just cannot throw it in the ocean right now three for 15 and three point field goals here in the second half and Mike Bray is calling off the dogs with the outcome no longer in doubt. And the handshakes begin. Jerry McNamara with 22 points. Josh Pace with 16. A quiet night for Warwick. He had 12. And Billy Edlin with those seven steals to set the pace defensively for Jim Beheim. The Orange go to 16 and 1 and 3 and 0 in the Big East. Final score Syracuse 70, Notre Dame 61. Stay tuned. Big Monday continues next. As Connecticut visits Oklahoma. For Jay Billis and Bill Raftree, I'm Sean McDonough. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now, good night from South Bend. Here's Chris Fowler. Thank you, and, and Jim Beheim on a night where Hakeem Horick did not play well. You had some other guys step up big, not only Jerry McNamara. But uh, Billy Edlin was terrific, especially defensively. He had about eight steals. Our, de our defense was the key because we couldn't get anything going on offense except finally Josh Pace. You know, I taught him that little left-handed. That's something like the shot you used to have, isn't it? That little, <laughs> yeah. that little throw up there that goes in. But, you know, our guys really played hard on defense. They've got a great shooting team. We did a good job of getting to their shooters. But uh, when Jerry took that last one, that was the worst look he had in the whole half. I knew he was going to make that one. But did, When it was up, did you really think it was good? All the way, all the way, right? When, when, it, when he takes a last shot, a late shot in the game, I don't even look at it. I know it's going in. Any significance to you, this being your 300th Big East win? Yeah, it means I've been around too long. That's what, that's what that means. That's all it is. Thank you. What do you think this team can get better in? Well, we got to get, uh, you know, Darrell Watkins back in a couple of weeks. We've got to get our sophomores better. we got to get more playing time out of them. And I think we can get better. I really think we're still young. Billy's just starting to get his legs under him. I think we have a chance to get a lot better uh, going down, and we're going to need to because there's nothing easy in this league. This league's the toughest I've seen it. No question. Well, Jim, congratulations on a great win. Let's go to your big game player, Jerry McNamara. Jerry, first of all, on that shot, as the, as the clock was winding down, you had.